Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials and thank you to our sponsors Mr Fothergill Seeds and Cobra Garden. Today I'm going to do part two of our Q&A session and answer the rest of your gardening questions. Well, we're going to start today with a question from Rachel Friend, and it's about Hydrangea Annabelle. And this is Hydrangea Annabelle. It's one of my favourite shrubs. Rachel's got one in her garden, and it's got very tall and it's flopped, and she wants to know whether she can cut it back. Well, I wouldn't cut it all the way back hard at this time of the year, Rachel. Maybe give it a tidy up, certainly to make sure that it stands up and takes some of the old flowers off. But you've got to remember, while ever it's got green leaves on, that is feeding the plant ready for next year. So really it's just a tidy up that you need to give it. We've got a question from Sue Short and she's got a large arum lily and it's not flowering very well and she wants to know how to get it to flower and when is the best time to divide it. Well, if it's growing vigorously, give it a high potash feed. That sometimes just slows it down a little bit and encourages flowers. A bit late this year though for flowers. So I would probably now wait until early spring when it's just starting to grow and then you can lift that clump, divide it into two or three good sized clumps, replant it or pot it, plenty of feed and hopefully that will invigorate it and you'll get some flowers from it next year. Penny Middleton wants to know when is the best time to prune a bottle brush and when can she move it? Well this is the Callistemon, has those really lovely bright red flowers and looks just like a bottle brush doesn't it? Um, if you're going to prune them the time to do it would be when they finish flowering so as soon as the flowers are finished you can just trim it but they don't like to be pruned too hard into old wood so it is a tidy up more than anything and as for when to move it you could do it early autumn or you could do it in late winter early spring good root ball and it should be absolutely fine Trudy Webster would like some advice on canners she says hers aren't flowering they're making plenty of growth and she's feeding them with a high potash fertilizer well it sounds like you're doing everything right there Trudy it might just be that they're still young plants they're not mature enough to flower certainly make sure they're in a good sized pot if that's how you're growing them and just keep up the watering and the feeding if they don't flower this year I'm sure they'll have built up a big enough rhizome so that you'll get the flowers for next year and then Catherine Simmons would like some tips on growing fuchsias and pansies well both very different plants are fuchsias and pansies um, but one thing I would say with both of them is they don't like to be too hot and they like to be deadheaded on a regular basis so make sure you keep them well watered Watered, feed them regularly and as soon as the flowers start to fade you can then pinch them off and that will keep them flowering and looking good. Bearing in mind your fuchsias are summer flowering, your pansies tend to be more spring flowering but you should get a good display. And finally on this section Richard Paul has got a hot tub and he wants to know if the water in the hot tub will kill the grass and plants if he empties it out. Um, well you've got to be a bit careful because there's often chlorine in there and chlorine will damage growing plants so what I would do is take the lid off it Richard leave it for several days and the chlorine in there will break down and dissipate and you can get test kits that will test the chlorine in a hot tub anyway and when it gets down to zero it should then be safe to put the water on your garden and your plants will love it at this time of the year because everything is just so hot and dry so we're gonna have a wander down the garden and look at some plants in the orchard Well, the next question is from Maria Dillis. It's about her poor soil. She's been trying to improve it by adding lots of organic matter, but still her flowers and vegetables are small and weak and look anemic. Well, what you need to do is keep up with the organic matter, Maria. That's really important. That will improve any type of soil that you've got, but you also then need to supplement it with some fertilizer. It sounds like you've got a lack of nutrients in your soil, so it can be any general fertilizer. Put some down in the spring when you're sowing or planting and maybe give a 
a few liquid feeds throughout the growing season and I'm sure that all your plants will look much better as a result of it. Andreas Gradziel, he's got some cucumbers in his greenhouse and he says they're taking over and they look like triffids. He's having to water lots during the day because they're starting to wilt and he wants to know whether he should open the greenhouse door a bit more and whether he needs to prune them. Well certainly cucumbers are really really thirsty so in hot weather like this and it's been really hot for the last few days you need to water them a lot probably in the morning and then again late afternoon early evening I would certainly leave the greenhouse door open you need as much air in there it can get too hot for them basically and as for pruning if they are like triffids then yes you can trim some of the side shoots off just to keep them in order otherwise they just completely take over and tying some shoots so you've got a bit of structure to the plant in there next is an apple question and this is from Siobhan Murphy she wants to know how and when to prune apples well it just so happens I've got an apple here this is an Egremont russet a lovely late season apple they're developing nicely on there now we can do pruning at two different types of the year we can do the winter pruning which is more structural and we can then thin it out and, and get some shape to it but at this time of the year we can do a little bit of summer pruning and what apples tend to do we can see this is the fruit in wood just here where we've got this nice crop of apples coming on and then we've got all these long shoots which have been made this year now if we leave these they will be fine but then next year they'll make the same growth and the tree just gets bigger and bigger so what we can do at this time of the year with apples is we can just take off some of these we can cut them back from anything from half to two thirds cut them back to a bud like that so it reduces the overall size of the tree and then on these short little spurs that we've cut back to will get blossom and we'll get fruit on there next year and then what we'll do in the winter is come back and do a little bit more pruning so if you stay with us on pots and trials we'll show you how to do that Siobhan also wants to know when she can lift and divide irises if these are the ones with the big rhizomes you've just about got time to do it try and do it before the end of August to give them time to settle in there Vicky Carr has got some regersia which is a lovely architectural structural plant in the garden they're two years old but the leaves have gone all brown and crispy well I think it's purely down to the weather this year we've had some very dry weather in some parts of the country and regersia is one of those plants that likes damp soil so if it's dried out with the heat of the sun on it it will just crisp up and lots of plants are sort of going over quickly I mean there's a lovely tree behind me that almost looks like it's in autumn this is the katsura tree should be green at this time of the year but because it's dry it's going over and that's what's happened with your regersia yeah. D. Godden would like to know when to prune loganberries, raspberries and black currants. Right, well there's a bit of a mixed bag there. Loganberries, blackberries, tayberries and summer fruiting raspberries, you prune them when they've finished fruiting. So the idea is when all the fruit's been picked, you cut out the stems that have fruited, down to ground level and then you leave the new growth that it's making now that will fruit next year. Black currants are different what you do with those is you try and take out some of the older wood and leave in a framework of the newer shoots but there's also going to be old wood there so what you try to do is cut some shoots down to ground level leave some in there and you get that balance of old wood and new wood so that you always get fruit the following year. Rosemary Double has got no fruit on her gooseberries and she hasn't had any for three years well not sure exactly what the cause of that is it could be down to the fact that um, they're being pruned at the wrong time if you cut them too hard back you'll get masses of new growth but you won't get the fruit or they could be in heavy shade so I would avoid too much pruning maybe prune them by half at this time of the year similar to what I did with the apples just then and, and it's on those little short spurs that you should get the fruit next year so just have a go with that and finally just before we wander back up into the garden we had a question question about plum blossom the plum tree just here this one is from Yvonne Charters she's got a plum that blossoms well but she only gets a few fruits I'm really sorry about that Yvonne this year we've got a bumper crop uh, what we could do with there is some rain just to make them swell but they are already starting to color up there and ripen I'm just wondering with yours it might be a pollination problem some plums do need a pollinator this is Victoria and this one will 
pollinate itself it's partially self-fertile but if you've got another variety that needs a pollinator and there isn't one in the area then you will get the blossom but you won't get the fruit so just do a little bit more investigation and hopefully you can sort the problem out so what we'll do now is have a wander up the garden and answer the last few Well, we'll finish off with the last few questions with me sitting on this wall because it's getting really hot in the garden now. And this is a question from Sue Lunt, who's got three agapanthus. The two blue ones are flowering, the white one isn't, and she wants to know how to get them to flower next year. Well, I don't know how you're growing them, whether they're in pots or the garden. I grow mine in containers, which works well for me, and they like the roots to be restricted. But if you've had them in a pot for too long and the roots are really, really compacted in there, it can slow down flowering. So what I do, every three or four years is knock them out of the pot late spring divide them repot them in fresh compost and this one was divided this March and as you can see it's flowering so that might be something you might want to consider the other thing you must do is keep them well watered they are quite thirsty in the summer and they need a weekly high potash feed to encourage the flowers and build them up for next year so try those and hopefully you'll get flowers in the future and Sue would also like to know why her peony Sarah Bernhardt that it's also in a container isn't flowering it did have a flower last year but none this year I think that's because it's in a container I don't think peonies suit growing in containers long term they're much better in the ground so if you've got to grow it in a pot maybe go for a bigger container use a John in his compost and again water and feed and feed and feed just to build that one up Sharon Dennis and Yada Ahmed have both asked the same question they want to know if plants this year have bloomed early in the garden uh, because of the weather that we've had and as a result of them going over do we need to start cutting them back now well I think yes you are right we had that very warm weather in spring in April and May we've had dry weather since so lots of plants have gone over quite early really so that's unfortunate but there are still late things coming on all the lovely Michaelmas daisies and there's asters and and dahlias that we can enjoy through the autumn but I wouldn't cut them all back at this stage I would probably deadhead them tidy them up but you need them to carry on growing and feeding the plant before you cut them back in early autumn Rachel Bowen has got a two foot tall Acer she's growing it in a pot and it's in a sunny position and this year the leaves have all dried up and shriveled well that is purely the weather Acer are woodland plants they like dapple shade on them they like moisture around the roots so I think what's happened with yours Rachel it's just got sunburn and that's what's made it shrivel up so it's probably not dead just keep it watered and if you can move it somewhere in the shade in the future it will do so much better and then we've got a question from Barbara Turkington uh, is it okay to prune a YGLA in August well yes you can it's a little bit late to be honest normally we prune them immediately after flowering which is sort of uh, June July time but there's no reason why you can't do it now don't go too heavy though that's all I would say is don't go mad and cut it hard back otherwise you're just going to get loads of growth next year and no flowers so if you can see where the old flowering stems were cut those out thin it out a little bit just a light tidy up and to reduce the size and you'll be fine and then finally before I go in and get myself a nice glass of cool juice Jan Chapel wants to know if the corn flowers that she's grown this year from seed will grow back again next year well cornflowers are what we call a hardy annual so you have to sow the seed every year they, they're not a perennial that comes back year after year but the good thing about cornflowers and lots of hardy annuals is when they flowered they drop their seed into the soil and then next year I'm sure you'll get lots of seedlings and that's happened in my veg plot I was growing larkspur in a bed last year and this year where the onions are I've got lots of larkspur plants and we've got a lovely range of color there so yes you should get cornflowers next year from the seeds that's dropped at the end of this season Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and thank you for all your questions. Next week, we're going to be back in the garden. I've got to get on with some work. So I'm going to be cutting hedges and sowing some perennial seeds. So we'll see you then. Bye.